Okay guys, tomorrow is the 13th. That's when they release the CPI numbers and the following day is the FOMC meeting on the 14th. So there's gonna be a lot of volatility. If you swing trade or use leverage trading, these are days we love because you can make a lot of money. Just practice some risk management. Now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna give you key support and resistance levels. I'm gonna show you a lot of charts that indicate even if we get a pump, the trend is still down. Now guys, I use BitGet. I am located in the US. I am currently not using a VPN. I can still access my account with no issues. If you want to create a new account, you might want to look into getting a VPN to protect your identity. You should do that anyways. People don't need to know where the hell you're located. But I will tell you one thing, I will continue to use BitGet because they show proof of reserves. This means if something catastrophic happened and everybody wanted to cash out of BitGet, the funds are there for you to withdraw. So you wouldn't have to worry about something happening like with FTX where your funds were not there if you needed them. So again, I will stick with an exchange I trust. If you want to sign up, my link's pinned down in the first comment description. If you want to learn how to trade using BitGet, remember they have USDT Futures, which is trading with real money, and they have USDT Demo. It's the same trading with both. Uh, this tutorial here is 20 minutes in. It shows you how to set up a long, set up a short, adjust your stop loss, and so on. So if you want to watch that video, I'll put a link up to it now. If you want to access our Discord and access these live charts, website's opticalcrypto.com. Link pinned for first comment description. So let's get on to this, guys. Now, I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, if we push up, the absolute highest I see us going is 19,500, 19,600. This is a resistance level, resistance, resistance, and you have the 21-week moving average right here. So again, I'm just saying, if we push up to 19,500, 19,600, I would short the hell out of it. Your current support, right? Support, support. If we come down, the point you want too long is 15,100. If any point this breaks, then what I've been talking about, about a bottom target, I, I do believe this would be our target. And I've talked about this ring. We have crossed this ring. I expect us to drop a while ago. We've been kind of going sideways. These are weekly candles. A lot can happen in a week. This is a brand new candle right here. But I would like to point out again, you know, this was a falling wedge, which is a bullish pattern. Support, resistance, support, resistance, support. We crossed this ring, had a hell of a drop. Looks like the same damn pattern. This is a falling wedge. Support and falling wedges are bullish patterns. Does not mean they can't break to the downside. Resistance, resistance, support. We just crossed this ring. So give it time, guys. These rings are, are indicators for events. If this ring right here plays out like this ring, we crossed it and had one hell of a drop. If this continues, even if we get the, the CPI numbers come in lower and we get a pump, we can still come right back down, break the support, and what happened back here will happen here. That's what I'm waiting to see. But either way, pay attention to your resistance at 19,600, highest I think we go, and your support 15,120. Remember the PPI uh, numbers came in a little hot, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with the CPI numbers. I think they will come in lower, but again, expect a lot of volatility, and I'll show you how I'll play this. Uh, this is just show you an example, guys. Uh, this is my C1 chart. Uh, market makers want to trick you. They'll send price up and get you bullish. They'll send price down and get you bearish, and then they'll just flip it and send it the other way. But these charts do help you find points too long and short. This published on December 9th. You notice price starts moving down. We'll come up, hit this line, and get rejected. So I took the time to map out the chart to give you support and resistance levels to hit this point and got rejected. I'm going to come back to this chart and give you support and resistance levels in a smaller time frame. That is this chart here. But I want to show you uh, the, the other charts that show why the trend is still down. And I, I'm expecting a lot more downside. People saying the bottom's in. I do not agree. Uh, the, so the CPI numbers. So this is the most important. All right. So tomorrow, tomorrow the numbers come out. The last CPI reading was 7.70. So if, if the CPI numbers come out 7.70 or higher, that, will mean, that means inflation is still pushing up. That will be bearish for markets, bearish for Bitcoin. If the numbers come out, CPI numbers come out below 7.70, that will be bullish for markets, bullish for Bitcoin. So pay attention to that when they release the CPI numbers tomorrow. This also gives us an idea of what's going to happen with the FOMC meeting on the 14th. Everybody's waiting to see if the Fed's going to raise interest rates by 75 basis points or 50 basis points. Most are expecting 50 basis points. So if the CPI numbers come in below 7.70, then chances are they're going to only raise interest rates by 50 basis points, which will be bullish, which means tomorrow, I mean, I'm sorry, the 14th, we'll get another pump. 
If inflation comes in hot, 7.70 or higher, then it's possible the Fed might raise interest rates higher or do more rate, uh, interest rates of 50 basis points for longer, which would be bearish and send markets down. Thus, I'm saying CPI numbers are the most important to give us an idea what happens with the FOMC. Uh, the Dow Jones, I just want to point out, guys, that it seems like the markets are pretty much topped. It does not mean we can't push up a little bit more, but ultimately, I think we are topped out with the NASDAQ, the S&P, the Dow. Uh, you can see that this right here, this yellow line, was resistance, resistance, resistance. We just pushed above that. We got rejected. So if we come back down, the most critical point to watch right now is around 32,680 for the Dow. <clears throat> if that breaks... We'll be breaking below this resistance, all right? There should be support. If that becomes resistance, we have a lot of downside. And that's why I have a question mark right here. Once you break this point, then we're, we're ready for that next major leg down. Currently, you can see this is resistance on the red line. Resistance, resistance, resistance. So again, that is a point to watch if we push up around 34,500. That'd be an ideal point to, uh, to enter a put for the Dow. But again, watch 32,500. That's a very key, a key support level. If that breaks, we have a lot more downside. The VIX. All right, so guys, the VIX, this is a volatility index for the S&P. And the blue is the S&P, and the white is the VIX. If you'll notice, when the VIX is the lowest point at support, the S&P tops out. It's a peak. The VIX at support, peak for the S&P. Uh, the lowest point for the VIX, peak for the S&P. And if you'll notice, this right here, this yellow uh, trend line, the support line, all right, this is where the VIX kept finding support, right? Well, we're pushing above that support, all right? So it will, it's possible it could flip as resistance. What I'm getting at is if the VIX continues to push up, that is bearish for markets. That means the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow continue down. Another chart showing that things are bearish. Also, in, <clears throat> excuse me, guys. In uh, orange is Bitcoin, and blue is the NASDAQ. You know, how it's been is Bitcoin almost followed the NASDAQ verbatim. If you'll notice, the NASDAQ tested its previous all-time high, almost. But notice what happened. <clears throat> Bitcoin continued to move down, even though the NASDAQ pushed up, which shows there's a lot of weakness in Bitcoin. Maybe because it's FTX, people are losing trust in crypto, all these, these different companies that are about to go insolvent or bankrupt. I'm just pointing out that even though the markets were bullish, you know, typically when the markets are bullish, Bitcoin's bullish. It seems like when the markets push up, Bitcoin goes sideways and down. When the markets come down, Bitcoin will come down. So uh, what I'm getting at, the markets are already topped out. Bitcoin's just been holding on barely. Once the markets come down, I expect Bitcoin to have a lot of downside as well. <clears throat> the DXY. Now, again, DXY is inversely correlated with, with the U.S. markets and with Bitcoin. If, if you see that the, uh, the, the uh, DXY starts pushing up, that's going to be bearish for the markets, bearish for Bitcoin. All I'm going to tell you right now, pay attention to 108. This is a very key resistance level. I talked about this in this previous video. We got rejected right here. If we get above and hold above 108, guys, that is going to be very, very bearish for Bitcoin in the markets. If we come down, your next major support to watch is 102. So 108 is a key resistance level. If we get above that, very bearish. If we, hold, if we come down to 102, that's a point too long, the DXY. <clears throat> All right, so let me give you your key support and resistance levels. So again, if the CPI numbers come in, let's say, low, and that would be bullish, the next point, the first resistance level to watch, potentially short, is around 17,150. You see this trend line right here was support and support. We broke below it. So if we come back up, not only do you have this previous support that will flip as resistance, you have this FIB channel line here. So the first point to watch is 17,154. If we get above that, if we follow this, <clears throat> this blue line back, you see that wick, this wick came down to 17,597. That would be this point right here. Plus you have a FIB channel line. So things got really bullish. Next point to short, 17,600. If things got super bullish, guys, the next point to watch is 18,500. And if we got above that, just like I showed you on this chart here, this would be the absolute top. You got the 21 week moving average and you got resistance setting at 19,560. And that is, again, this, you follow this back. Just a lot of support and resistance and you have a FIB channel line. So again, I will short these points. I will short 17,154, scalp short. I will short 17,595. 
I will definitely short 18,550, and if we push up 19,500, I will short the hell out of that. If we drop, again, uh, you can see that this has been a lot of support and resistance, this yellow line right here, just outlining this FIB channel line. So your next major support is around 16,200. You can see that this line right here has been a lot of support and resistance, depending on when you make contact, depends on the price. But this target, 15,100, is on par with our support. But just pay attention, guys. I just showed you why things are a lot more bearish than people. Some people are saying the bottom's in, the market's going to put an all to, new time high. There's there's a lot more bearish indicators right now. There's a lot there's a lot more reason to be bearish than bullish. So even if we get a pump, it is very possible this will come right back down. And if we break 15,100, I told you the target and the time frame, watch previous videos. And if we push up to 18,550 or 19,500, that's where I'm going to short. But again, if the CPI numbers come in, remember, where's this chart? If, if the CPI numbers come in at 7.70, then it has not changed. Inflation is still is still pushing up or it hasn't come down that will be bearish so 7.70 or higher is bearish for the cpi numbers if we get lower than 7.70 that will be bullish and that will also tell us what will happen at the fomc meeting whether it's 50 basis points or 75 basis points but expect a lot of volatility be ready to play it again guys if you want to sign up for bigot uh, my link's pinned down for his comment description if you'll get access to our Discord and access to the charts, the website's optocrypto.com. We can pin the first comment description. That's it, guys. I'm out. Stay safe, stay smart.